Uh, dear conference organizers, uh, dear participants and dear conference guests, uh, we welcome you to our presentation. Uh, it is dedicated to uh, the so-called second future in Bosnian, Croatian, Serbia. We will also refer to it as Futur Drugi. Um, at the beginning, uh, I would like to give you a brief overview of future marking in Slavic. All Slavic languages can be divided into two groups, North and South. Uh, in North Slavic languages, both West and East, um, there are two strategies uh, for, used for future marking, uh, perfective present for perfective verbs and paraphrastic future with infinitive for imperfective verbs. Uh, as far as the South Slavic languages are concerned, um, Slovenian uh, stays a little bit apart. It uses the same uh, auxiliary, uh, the perfective present from the verb to be from the stem bud and um, an L participle. However, in Slovenian, uh, this construction can be uh, formed from both from the verbs of both aspect aspects imperfective and perfective. Bosnian Croatian Serbian shares with Bulgarian and Macedonian um, a paraphrastic future form with auxiliary um, originally meaning uh, will. Uh, however, in Bosnian Croatian Serbian, this combined with infinitive whereas in Bulgarian and Macedonian was present for tense. Uh, there is also one more construction which comprises uh, the auxiliary um, from the stem bud, bound, the perfective present, and an L participle. In Polish, it is combinable only with uh, imperfective uh, aspect, whereas in Bosnian and Croatian Serbian with both aspects. Uh, Polish and Bosnian Croatian Serbian constructions also differ in that they have a different distribution. And now a few words about it. Um, in the scholarly literature, there are different labels used for futur drugi. Some scholars call it future perfect, implying that this construction is used uh, to mark the anteriority in the future. Other scholars may call it future conditional. Uh, some uh, scholars like Vukovic claim that um, futur drugi is only limited to subordinate clauses. And one of such examples you may see on the slide. Uh, here, the futur drugi is used in the subordinate clause, budim živil. Um, it should be uh, noted that none of these labels perfectly suits uh, Futur Drugi. None of these labels covers all the features, all the functions of Futur Drugi. Uh, as Kovacevic uh, has shown, um, the second future in Bosnian and Croatian Serbian is not limited only to subordinate clauses. It also may occur in main clauses and independent clauses, like in the example number two, uh, Budenosil. Here, uh, Futur Drugi is used together with um, an adverb having an epistemic meaning, maybe. Um, as far as the future perfect function of Futur Drugi is concerned, it is only possible for verbs of the perfective aspect, like in example number three. Ako budem otišli. Here, futur drugi uh, marks uh, the anteriority in the future. And in this function, it is equal to, uh, it is synonymic, equal to uh, the perfective present form um, marked in green. Uh, however, uh, as we see from the example number four, if Futur Drugi um, is made, um, is formed uh, from the, um, an imperfective aspect verb, Budimo um, Mogli, both events 
uh, in the subordinate clause and in the main clause are simultaneous. So there is no uh, function of future perfect, no anteriority in the future. Uh, and now we have come, we have reached uh, the crucial question of our presentation. Uh, which semantic component is the primary one in Bosnian, Croatian, Serbian, second future? Uh, maybe it is futurity or uh, conditionality, uh, irreality. Uh, does uh, subordination play an important role? And uh, if we make one step further, we may ask whether the futurity and the semantics of Bosnian, Croatian, Serbian, Second future is a subset, is only a subset of a more of, of a broader uh, semantic domain of um, irrealist present. In order to answer our questions, uh, we uh, applied a comparative approach. So we investigated uh, the semantics of uh, Bosnian, Croatian, Serbian, Futur, Drugi by identifying its semantics counterparts in the related languages. We have chosen two Slavic languages, Bulgarian and Polish. These two languages have been chosen um, intentionally and not accidentally. Uh, Polish have been uh, has been chosen uh, because it shares with Bosnian, Croatian, Serbian the same construction, though they have different meanings. At the same time, Bulgarian features no uh, construction with boot, so no conditional future, and uses other forms um, to express the same meaning. Uh, at the same time, Bulgarian shares uh, the same future marking, uh, the paraphrastic form with auxiliary originally meaning will. So, uh, in order to express the conditional future in Bulgarian, uh, there are three um, options available. Perfective present, imperfective present, and paraphrastic future form. Um, the first option implies that no imperfective aspect can be expressed. The second implies that, um, that future uh, doesn't have an um, is not overtly marked. And uh, the third variant implies that uh, conditionality is not overtly marked. For Polish, there are only two options available, perfective present for perfective verbs and imperfective uh, and paraphrastic future with L participle or infinitive for imperfective verbs. Uh, we collected our data uh, from parasol corpus. It is a parallel corpus of Slavic and other languages. Uh, and uh, we collected the data from uh, the translations of um, novels um, into Bulgarian, Polish, Croatian, and Serbian. And we also um, took into consideration took into consideration some alternative translations into Polish, Croatian, and Serbian. In our data set, there are about 150 examples in Bosnian, Croatian, Serbian, with equivalents uh, in Bulgarian and Polish. And now my co-author, Stefan, will discuss the results of our research. Thank you, Jana. Um, yes, I will take over from here and briefly discuss the results. So on this slide, we see the comparison of the most common equivalents of the second future in the, um, in the translations into Serbian and Croatian. As we said, we have two main corpora in Serbian Croatian and two kind of two small corpora in Serbian and Croatian, which uh, contain alternative translations mm, of the same um, novels that are found in these two other ones. So anyway, what we see here is, first of all, that the most common 
uh, form the most common equivalent of the future sec of the second future in all the four uh, translations translation groups if you like uh, they are brown and that is basically the present perfect we also see that all the other alternative equivalents uh, of the second future are basically there is a, remain in the same or very similar um, in very similar relations and in this very similar proportions. So basically, we just see that that um, all the four groups of texts in all the in the two languages are basically the same, actually. So let's uh, go to some of the examples, which we will not go too much into detail. Uh, but let's see, uh, for instance, here we have uh, in a, a Serbian text where we have the future, the second future, ukoliko ne budemo mogli da se slobodimo gostiju, which means if we are not able to free ourselves from the guests. And in the Croatian uh, translation, for instance, in this particular case, the translator chose to use a perfective verb in the present tense, which is quite a common um, way in either in either direction. So you, often you will have the same form in Croatian, and then in a Serbian translation they will use the same kind of equivalent, the present perfect. So this is a kind of a also a preference of the translator that we see here. We also see that we can have a conditional form that uh, sometimes corresponds to the second future. Kada on to bude otkrio, when he discovers. Kad bi to sam otkrio, that's a conditional form. And also another one, which is very much less common, that's the future. So here we, we, we see the second future. Kad budete proletali. And here in the, the equivalent in this particular translation translation integration we have the future one which is quite uncommon but it also occurs let's go to some of the details about the um, uh, comparison between the bosnian serbian creation on the one hand and polish on the other hand what we see here is that the present perfective here too is the most common translation of the second future in Bosnian Croatian Serbian. So Polish usually opts for this option here, the present perfect. It means the translators usually uh, uh, would find, uh, well, the translations, these were not only the translations because obviously there were also some original novels in Polish, but basically the meaning of the future, uh, second future in Bosnian Serbian Croatian was often uh, most commonly, it was uh, given by the present perfect, the uh, present perfective. I want to say, pardon me. The second most common one. These are the examples that are not applicable. So some forms which are not verbs that you can really compare to the future, the second future. So this is the second most common uh, equivalent of a future second in uh, both and Syrian creation, and that would be for imperfective verbs only. That's the periphrastic future in Polish with the L participle of the type bende robiu, I will be doing. There is also a very high frequency or relatively noticeable frequency, let's call it that way, of the conditional. Uh, it's quite interesting, but it's of the both aspects, both perfective and imperfect. Let's look now at Bulgarian. So when we compare the second future in Serbian, Croatian and Bosnian uh, to the Bulgarian, uh, counterparts of the or translations, we find the present perfective here too, as the most common form. However, note that uh, this is where the difference appears between Bulgarian on the one hand and all the other languages involved in this, uh, in this study. Bulgarian uses a fair amount of the present imperfective verbs, and this is quite important. Why? Because, the present imperfective here obviously also is used for activities that have not even started at the present moment. So for activities that are going to occur in the future and that are conditioned by something, unlike in the other two languages, as we saw on the previous slide. Uh, Bulgarian also uses some small amount of the future marking uh, of the real future 
marking in the translations of the future, second future in Bosnian Serbian and Croatian. Let's look at some of the examples where we compare Bosnian Serbian and Croatian with, the, with Bulgarian and um, with Polish. So here we have obviously the second future. In Polish, we have been the Jezdziu, that will be the future, the periphrastic future in Polish with the El participle. Uh, one more important thing, if you allow me, I'll just go back to slides. Note one interesting thing. You know that Polish has two types of periphrastic future, one with the L participle and the other one with infinitive. Often they are described as synonymous, but as we see here, our data does, do not confirm that. So most of the periphrastic future forms are with the L participle, not with the infinitive as indicated by this blue little column. I'm going back to the slide that where I was with the examples. Uh, yes, so here we see such an example with the L participle. Here we see uh, the Bulgarian quite common um, form, the present imperfective, which refers to an action that has not even started. It's an actual action that will start in the future. Uh, here we see an example of the future, second future, being replaced by uh, being having the equivalent in Polish, which is uh, conditional. If somebody asks about me or for me, or if somebody looks for me. Here in Bulgarian, we again have the present impact. We also have different cases uh, of uh, tr translations of the Bosnian Serbian Croatian future, second future, which in Polish corresponds to the present effective, dowie, czego się dowie, what he finds out. And in Bulgarian, here we have the real future form with a szte partic uh, particle. Here on this slide, we have a little comparison of the most. Uh, of the biggest corpus in Serbian this time only, which is compared to all the other corpora, and it only looks at the aspectual markers, not really at the different tenses. And we see that basically your second future in the Serbian examples corresponds to the most, uh, to the highest extent, to the imperfective forms in the other Slavic, in the other um, um, basically Bosnian Serbian creation corpora. Of translations. The perfective ones are much less common, as we expected to see too. This is confirmed in many studies on the second future, that it mostly occurs with, with the imperfective verbs. In the Polish and the Bulgarian uh, translations, we see a higher, a considerably higher uh, extent of perfective verbs, which indicates that both languages resort to using the present perfect for expressing this futurity and conditionality. Now we can go to, to the summary of our results. Basically, uh, we see that the present perfective in Bosnian Serbian creation is really the most common equivalent to the second future. Um, and now what is quite interesting is that the second uh, one after that in uh, Bulgarian and Polish are different, the second most common equivalent. The second most common equivalent in Polish will be the real periphrastic future with the L with the uh, L participle. And in Bulgarian, it will be, as I said, the present imperfective verb. So basically, from here on, Polish and Bulgarian do, ex do use different, different means of expressing the future conditionality here. What can we say about these results overall? Well, first of all, present perfective is definitely shown to often have this at least con contextually licensed uh, uh, conditional and future semantics. That's common for all the languages. So we don't need any other means to express future plus conditionality. Uh, it's already contained in the present perfect forms. If that form is available in any of the languages, it will probably be used uh, to express the future, the second future in Serbian, Croatian, and Bosnian. Uh, now, what else can we say? Bulgarian uh, often 
covertly expresses futurity and conditionality. Why? Well, first of all, because of the present perspective, which covertly contains these semantic elements, futurity and conditionality, but also its second most common equivalent, which will be the present imperfective, also does not entail futurity and it does not entail conditionality. This is only uh, contextually, basically, contextually um, licensed. In, uh, uh, it's an inter interpretation only. It's only covertly expressed. Uh, Polish uh, does not uh, have the same um, semantic means in that respect. Conditionality is the semantic bit that is often covertly expressed and not overtly. Uh, because of the present perfective and the ban der obiu or the periphrastic future, which can also refer to a real future which has no com conditional component there. What we look, what we see in this pattern here for all the three languages is that if we refer to Bosnian and Croatian and, and, Bul and Bosnian as one language, uh, Irealis present is basically the most common component of all of these meanings and it includes both futurity and conditionality and um, Plungen actually exp uh, explains quite a lot about this relation and so we go on to the conclusion uh, to say that basically why bud is the actual component with which uh, Bosnian Serbian and Croatian do uh, build the second future is probably its foundation in the irrealist future, uh, if, sorry, in the irrealist present, which means to the non-real, well, the present tense that does not apply to the actual events that occur now, but that are conditioned by something. Uh, so we see that basically, uh, and there is a very nice historical overview of this development across South Slavic in uh, Sedlacic. Uh, so then as a next step in developing the second future in Bosnian Serbian creation, uh, we see that it combines with the L participle and spe it specializes, it narrows its uh, irrealis semantics onto conditionality and futurity. Polish, on the other hand, uh, specializes its irrealis uh, foundation of the, of the Bud, of the Bud root. Uh, onto the future uh, semantics, and it reverses it only for the imperfective verbs. And these actual semantic relations between the irrealist, conditional, and futurity are already, they, they, re, they are reflected, uh, the, the, these developments are already actually, they correspond to the findings in Penkova's articles from nine, uh, 2019 and 2020. So we see that uh, the the periphrastic future or basically the, 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 the second future in Bosnian Serbian creation has a suppositional mood as its actual kind of semantic form, um, which is very linked to the irrealis. That would be it. These are our references and thank you very much for your attention.